Spotlight. I'm Renu Bakshi, and joining me today is climate scientist, university professor, and BC Green Party MLA, Dr. Andrew Weaver. Dr. Weaver, thanks for joining us today. It's an extremely controversial topic these days, and that is pipeline expansion. Uh, the National Energy Board is considering a proposal right now. You have reservations about this expansion. It's very clear to me that Kinder Morgan's proposal must be scrutinized. The reason why it needs to be scrutinized is that the expected tanker traffic off our beautiful coast here, as you can see out the back, is uh, proposed to be triple. You know, there's lots of arguments to be made on either side. Do you transport by rail? Do you transport by pipeline? And if you look at what happened in Quebec, 47 people died after the train derailed. Last week, there was another incident in Ontario. If not pipelines, then what's the safest option? The reality is, is that the concern of the residents here in Oak Bay Gordon Head, and in particularly my concern, is that what is being transported is not oil per se. It's diluted bitumen that's mixed with fluids to make it flow in a pipe, to transport it um, to Asia, to refine it there. The overarching concern is about do we, should we really be shipping this product that would be extraordinarily difficult to clean in our coastal waters if there were to be a spill. So whether it be train or pipeline, the relevant issue here is what are we actually shipping? It's this heavy, heavy stuff. It's not been upgraded, it's not been refined. So there is a debate about trains versus pipes. I think that's a misplaced debate. The debate should be why are we sending our natural resource ab abroad as fast as we can, as quickly as it can, with no kind of long-term strategy to wean ourselves off our dependence on a resource that others are weaning themselves off on? Certainly there must be some benefits to pipelines. The, the, the government <clears throat> would argue that uh, our economy is driven by the oil industry. The reality is it's not. There are more jobs in the beer industry in Canada than there are in the oil sands industry. There are far more jobs, for example, in British Columbia, in the film industry, in the creative arts industry, in the digital technology industry, in the gaming industry, than the oil and mining sectors in, in BC. This is kind of a, a thinking of, of yesteryear. It's a 20th century kind of vision of our economy is based on a single resource. It's not. So what are the benefits? Of course, if you have a product and you sell it, there's a benefit. If we actually truly wanted to have benefits for Canadians, we would ensure that we were not shipping raw products afar. We would be shipping refined products. Uh, that would keep the jobs in, in, the, in the country, it would make taxes be paid here, and then Canadians would benefit. So let's not, let's not be fooled. This is not about benefiting Canadians. It's about benefiting the shareholders of the multinationals that want to actually extract this resource. In terms of the National Energy Board and the process, I understand that you have some reservations. The, this, this process has, has certainly lost the confidence of British Columbians. I've put in, you know, close on 500 questions in the first round and, and you know, we had to challenge about a third of them and the NEB ruled the, the transmont didn't have to respond. Let me, let me give you a simple example. Um, the oil response recovery plan that was d uh, done by um, uh, Transmount and the emergency response for an area like we see out here uh, was under the assumption that there was no, no, no windy conditions, no waves, and there was 20 hours of sunlight in in the day that this occurred in August. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that there is no day in August in this area that has 20 hours of sun, sunlight. If you want to find a day in, in August that has 20 hours of sunlight, you should be in Tuk to Yuktuk. So, but we're not talking about pipelines in Tuk to Yuktuk. We're talking about pipelines here. And there's other examples like this. If the process with the National Energy Board is broken, how do you uh, propose it be fixed? The solution is that British Columbia has the right under the, joint, the equivalency agreement with Ottawa to pull out. And they could pull out of this equivalency agreement on this project, not all the projects, but on this project, and, and take their own environmental assessment. So I've been calling on the government of British Columbia to do that. And most recently, um, when Trans Mountain sued a number of residents on Burnaby Mountain for exercising their civic right to protest. You know, that was, in my view, the last straw. We now have a multinational, a foreign multinational, suing residents because they wanted to demonstrate. That, that was, at that point, it was time for the government to pull out. The fact they haven't is very troubling. And stakeholders outside of BC, what would you say to them, the ones that want the pipeline built? Um, we have an oversupply. In, in North America of oil. And, and I, I recognize that Alberta is landlocked. I recognize that Alberta 
um, wants to get its product to market. Uh, I would say, look, let's go back to the 1970s and 80s when the National Energy uh, Plan was introduced by Pierre Trudeau and Albertans were absolutely apoplectic about the federal government interfering in what they perceived to be their jurisdiction, which was energy. Well, here we are today with the exact situation, and ironically, it's that province that's trying to dictate to the rest of the country what a national energy policy should be. I mean, this is not lost on British Columbians. We in British Columbia value our beauty, we value our natural environment, and we believe that the future is one with which harvests our natural resources, the renewable ones, first and foremost, and doesn't base our economy on yesterday's technologies, yesterday's fossil fuel technologies. It's clear to me that Kinder Morgan's proposal must be scrutinized. Dr. Weaver. Thank you very much for joining us and talking about, as I said, a very controversial topic and one that's very timely. And thank you for watching. If you'd like to join the conversation or support the opinion, follow the link below. I'm Renu Bakshi for Spotlight.